morning everyone so this is vamshi krishna so in this video we will see some of the priority based questions and uh, basic and important multiple choice questions for the staff nurse examinations mainly for the north set aims and uh, mhsrb in telangana so the first question is a plane that passes through the midline of the body and divides into equal right and left sides so when the human body is came the plane which is came from the straight fr uh, from the head to foot and uh, it made right left and right parts so what is the name of that plane options are obliquo parasagittal mid sagittal coronal plane the right one is option c mid sagittal plane so here you can see the picture this is the mid sagittal plane so when you cut the human body like this we can make right side and uh, right side and left side parts we can make and uh, if you cut from the from ear to ear side okay that is nothing but coronal plane okay so we can make a parts like anterior and posterior if you cut the in a transverse plane means we can make upper and lower parts so these are the planes we use in the terminology in anatomy the next one is chopstick sign is seen in an indication of so in which condition we can see the chopstick sign options are hyperkalemia hyponatremia hypocalcemia hypercalcemia the right one is option c hypocalcemia that is nothing but reducing of calcium in blood so in the case of this condition we have the chopstick sign positive for example if you touch the right side of the face okay okay if you touch the either right or left side of the face we can see the this kind of features okay so this is called chopstick sign positive the next one is complete removal of breast related structures also is known as so the breast is okay so in the case of breast cancer okay this is the nipple and this is areola so in this condition we are removing the whole breast and related structures like lymph nodes okay lymph nodes and uh, glands ducts and everything is removed okay complete removal of breast is known as options are mastectomy halter surgery tubectomy hysterectomy the right one is option b halter surgery so halter surgery is nothing but a complete breast and related structures are removing removing is known as halter surgery but in the case of mastectomy so we can remove the a single structure like a, some affected gland okay affected area is remove is nothing but mastectomy the next one is solution for the bladder irrigation for a patient who is undergoing transurethral resection of prostate so first of all you try to understand the question okay the patient is going to transurethral resection surgery okay so he is going to undergo the surgery okay so which type of solution is used for the bladder irrigation that is before surgery options are glycine normal saline ringer lactate isolopy the right one is option a glycine so before surgery we irrigate the bladder with the glycine after surgery we go for the normal saline so 
what is the name what is the meaning of transurethral resection of prostate so it is nothing but here you can see the picture this is the penis okay and here we have the testis and this is the prostate gland so in the case of benign prostate hyperplasia or some other conditions what will happen the swelling of the prostate it leads to the blockage of the urine okay so in this condition the doctors make a scope insertion through the urethra so this is a urethra and inserted a scope and they remove the some parts of the prostate glands okay some part of the prostate gland to make a free entry of the urine into the urethra so in this condition we go for the glycine before surgery normal saline after surgery the next one is quantity of sodium chloride required to make 1 liter of normal saline so how much how much quantity of the sodium chloride is required to make a 1 liter of normal saline options are 900 grams 0.9 grams 9 grams 90 grams option c is the right one 9 grams is need to make 1 liter of ns the next one is the pressure set in autoclave for sterilization so how much pressure is need to sterilize the equipment in the autoclave options are 15 lb 5 lb 10 lb 20 lb the right one is option a 15 lb pressure is required to uh, sterilize the equipments with in the autoclave inoculating loop is sterilized by so firstly what is the inoculating loop so inoculating loop is nothing but it is just like a, a simple rod okay at the end we have the a small ring so this is the handle and this is the inoculating ring so what is the purpose of inoculating loop so this is used for the transportation of sim, uh, small micro organism cultures okay for example uh, transportation is nothing but for example we have the culture here okay so in this culture media we have the some bacteria so we need we need to collect some of the bacteria from the culture so what we use this inoculating loop by using of this inoculating loop we collect the small content of the bacteria and transporting into other culture otherwise other functions oh so this is the inoculating loop so this is sterilized by which method options are hot air oven autoclave flaming radiation the right one is option c flaming flaming is nothing but on the fire okay this is a fire so on this fire we make a sterilize the inoculating loop the next one is which of the chemical is most powerful for disinfection options are detol lysol phenol kmno4 the right one is option c phenol phenol is a most powerful disinfectant the next one is volume of enema solution for the infants so how much ml of enema solution we can give for the infants options are 100 to 200 ml 300 to 400 ml 200 to 300 ml 400 to 500 ml the right one is option a 100 to 200 ml is average amount of enema solution for the infants it is it may be about the 250 ml also the next question is the symptoms of increasing increased intracranial pressure in 
infant options are vomiting and nausea depressed fontanel irritability vomiting and diarrhea so the right option is option a vomiting and nausea is present in the case of increased icp as well as in the adults also but don't confuse with the irritability the next one is contra indications for lumbar puncture include options are increased icp suspected meningitis gullian barr syndrome all of the above so the right one is option a increased icp so in the case of increased intracranial pressure if you go for the lumbar puncture there is a risk for the leakage of fluid so increased icp is contraindication for the lumbar puncture the next question is an adult is to have tracheostomy performed so one patient has undergone the tracheostomy what is the nursing priority action options are shave the neck establish a communication insert a foley catheter start an iv fluid administration the right one is option b establish communication so after tracheostomy we need to first of all look for the voice okay if there is any risk for the speaking for the patient so our first priority is the communication okay next one is when assessing the client with a head injury okay so when the patient has head injury which of the following should receive priority attention options are to assess the lung sounds to check the clarity of the speech to see the mobility of the fingers and to check the pupillary reactions that is nothing but pupillary response the right one is option d we need to check for the pupillary responses to the light this is our first priority next one is the nurse has just completed emergency delivery of a term infant okay what is the priority nursing concern at this time term infant okay options are controlling hemorrhage in the mother option b remove, uh, removing the after birth removing the after birth what will you remove sorry this is wrong option and option c is the keeping the infant warm cutting the umbilical cord so you have the you have conducted emergency delivery for the term infant so what is your first priority so it means emergency means there is a some risk so among this four options okay so the question is about the term infant so we are not looking for the mother okay this is not wrong and uh, cutting the umbilical cord is not first priority okay so we need to keep the baby warm this is first priority and then you go for the umbilical cord and the next one is a option a the next one is a nurse is caring for a client who has a radium implant for cancer of the cervix what is the priority nursing action so one patient has some radioactive agent in the body okay for treating the cancer of the cervix so what is your first priority options are store urine 
in lead containing containers restrict visitors to a 10 minute stay wear a lead lined apron when giving care avoid giving injections in the gluteal muscles mm, so what is your first priority option b restrict visitors to 10 minute stay so this is our first priority why because the patient already have some radioactive agent okay so this radiation can affect the other people so this is our first priority and you can go for the option a option b option c and option d the next one is which nursing action has the highest priority for client in second stage of labor options are help the mother to push effectively prepare the mother to breastfeed on the delivery of table check the fetal position administer medications for pain so what is your first priority when when the mother in the second stage of labor so first stage is cervical dilatation second stage is delivery of the baby third stage is delivery of the placenta fourth stage is observation period so in the case of third second stage what is your first priority so here in the second stage already uh, the baby has not delivered so what is your priority option a help the mother to push effectively the right one is option a the next thing is a uh, what is the priority nursing intervention for a client during the immediate post operative period options are monitoring vital signs observing for hemorrhage maintaining a patent airway recording the intake and out output so what is the nursing priority intervention after immediate surgery post operative period the right one is option c we need to check for the patent airway whether the airway is clear or not we have to look and then you go for the checking vital signs temperature okay pulse bp and respiration like that and then you go for the observation for hemorrhage commonly after surgery there is a some hemorrhage okay and then finally you can go for the intake and output why because immediate after the post operative period we should not check for the <coughs> sorry in the post operative period we can finally you can check for the intake and the output intake is nothing but iv fluids output is nothing but urine okay where we are so option c is the right answer so the next question is which electrolyte imbalance should be the priority concern for nurse when assessing 10 years old client okay 10 years child love okay so diagnosed with acute renal failure so one child has diagnosed with acute acute renal failure so what is your first priority for check the electrolyte imbalance options are hyperkalemia hyper hi, sorry hypercalcemia hyperphosphatemia hyperkalemia hypernatremia the right one is option c hyperkalemia so we need to check for the potassium levels for the child with acute res, uh, renal failure so acute renal failure is nothing but it is just temporary loss of the renal function okay it is not chronic chronic is a long term acute is a short term the next thing is uh, which nursing diagnosis should a nurse give highest priority when caring for a client with major depressive disorder options are powerlessness 
potential for spiritual distress potential for suicidal behavior disturbed sleep pattern i know the right answer is option c this is damn sure in a in a in a highest i mean major depressive condition surely we will have suicidal behavior this is complete damn sure real one so after the you need to look for the pot, uh, suicidal behavior in the client and then you go for the other checking powerlessness spiritual distress is nothing but loss of hope on the god on god we, the person doesn't have hope and the next is sleeping pattern this is also very effective the next one is which nursing diagnosis should have the highest priority for infant newly diagnosed with tracheoesophageal fistula so firstly what is tracheoesophageal fistula so trachea is like this so this is trachea and bronchi and uh, just to be said trachea we have the esophagus so this is maybe the esophagus this is a small stomach so in this condition so in this condition we have the connection between the trachea and esophagus okay this is a trachea this are the c shaped rings it is just around the 18 to 20 something so this is a connection between the esophagus and the trachea this is known as tracheoesophageal fistula so what is the nursing priority first priority risk for impaired infant attachment risk for infection risk for imbalance in nutrition risk for aspiration so you can give the right answer that is option d risk for aspiration so this is your first priority and then you go you can go for the second priority for the imbalanced nutrition so third priority risk for infection fourth priority mother attachment so option d is the right one the last question is the a nurse managing care of a pediatric client following renal trauma again renal system the nurse should monitor the client's fast options are electrolyte imbalance profuse bleeding hypertension hypotension <coughs> the right one is option b why the bleeding is first priority why because already we know that renal trauma okay the kidney has damaged so in the renal trauma we need to look for the bleeding okay this is our bleeding okay we need to look for the bleeding so this is our first priority and then you can go for the hypertension hypotension otherwise electrolyte imbalance your next priorities so this is the option b is the right one this is end of my class guys thank you for watching please subscribe and share with your friends